We're gonna warm it up though. This is a Iceman theme panel. We're just trying to get all authentic. We're gonna warm it up. Can I just make a magma theme panel? You know what? Nothing warms up a room better than applause. Yeah. Okay. There you go. That's a good start. Okay, uh, thank you everybody. This is the X-Men retrospective panel here at Comic-Con Revolution. My name is Chris Aaron. I'm the editor of uh, Newsarama, one of the longest running sites about comics. But I know you're not here for me. You're here for uh, these three guys here. Um, I can introduce you and give you their bio, but, I, but I'd like to, for them to say who they are, their booth numbers, and kind of what your favorite X-Men work is so far. So I know some of you are still working on some new X-Men stuff. Uh, Will, do you want to start first? Um, uh, my name is Will Potasio, and uh, I, I don't know my my table number. I just work there. He's um, two rows <laughs> up from me. There you go. Um, and uh, X Men. Um, uh, of course, it's got to be the uh, rolling out of Bishop. Yeah. Uh, Will's uh, created a Bishop classic character, and he's currently working on the major X book with Rob uh, Liefeld, which everybody should check out. Okay. Uh, my name's Steve Gordon. Uh, I guess I represent the animation side of X-Men here. Um, I was character designer and one of the directors on X-Men Evolution. I also worked on Wolverine and the X-Men. Mm -hmm. I'm at uh, table E1 in Artist Alley. Okay. Art? Yes, last but not least. Uh, R.T. Bear, and uh, I've been working for 35 years in the comics industry, mostly as an inker. I've worked with Will Spertaccio on the X book, what was it, X Factor we started? And then we did Uncanny, and then, uh, of course, Will's created uh, Bishop and made history. So my favorite runs would probably be the stuff with Will's, Jim Lee and uh, Carlos Pacheco on X Men. So, so you also you inked a Bishop series with uh, George Genante. Yes. Uh, Bishop last um, X Men. That's true. Yeah, I think on and off I've probably put about 15 years in that office. Yeah. Yeah. Working on various uh, X projects. I also penciled and inked a little series called Cable. Yeah. With Fabian Diciesa as the writer. Yeah, the, uh, the co uh, yeah, uh, you you were that that that's that one of the earliest uh, cable stories that really explored his backstory right after he was um, introduced. But I believe he had cable with the goatee. Is that right? Yeah, he had the goatee and the shaved sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, um, so we're here today to talk about X Men. Like uh, these people are doing X Men currently, or have done them in the past. I have a lot of questions, but because we have uh, uh, people out here, I don't want to hog up all the time, so if, if anybody has a uh, question that they have before I get started, I will allow that. If you have a question, you can just raise your hand, <coughs> and I'll point to you, and like, otherwise I'll just uh, take over. Any questions for anybody before I start? Yes, sir. This is for Steve. Um, since you're a director for x Evolution, have you been, been, have you been any, of, any of the cast members in, in Canada? Uh, I've met a couple at cons. That's about <laughs> as far as it goes. Most of them, because they're Canadian and Vancouver and stuff, we uh, recorded them remotely. We, you know, spoke, uh, but haven't really met. So yeah, that's a unique thing to probably share with comics, where it's mostly done from home, and the creators meet each other at conventions. Yeah, they well, don't really hang out. But we were all at stu different studios. We were working in a studio, and they were went into a studio to record, but it was done through uh, a high-speed uh, network so that we could hear true voice sound and stuff. So, And the reason why we went up for that particular show up to Canada was due to cost. Um, like, Pete, uh, people are here because they're fans of X-Men, but how, like, like how did each of you become fans of X-Men before you became creators and authors on like, X-Men? Art, did you want to start? I, I remember the early uh, Neil Adams X-Men yeah. run. So the one that stood out for me was, uh, was the battle between 
uh, Cyclops and Havoc when they were brothers. You know, that's the first time I really remember those two characters really being like getting in the backstory and in their history. And then there was the one story where um, I think it was Trask where they did Sentinels, and that was I was hooked after that. And then of course the giant size X Men, oh, yeah. you know, with uh, with Cockrum and those. Um, yeah, those were those were amazing. Um, for me, uh, I first read X Men back in the original days with Kirby and Stan Lee. Mm -hmm. And to tell you the truth, after that, I kind of lost track of them. And it wasn't until I was hired to work on X Men Evolution that I had to kind of dive back in. So it was all kind of fresh and new to me at that point. I had to find out who everyone was. I'm going to come back to that in a second. That's pretty interesting. I got a follow up to that. But, Will, what's this? What was your first? Um, I, 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 uh, I did it. Um, I was too young to read and buy uh, the original um, X Men. But uh, I was introduced to the X Men through them. Remember, the, uh, there was those uh, compilation books of some of the old superiors? One of them, there was a sequel called Son of Something, you know. Yes. Uh, the, what was it called? Um, Do you remember? I mean, it was a, it, it, the first edition had like a lot of the one, number ones. Is this like the Marvel Saga or something Stan Lee put together? Yeah, it was some compilation, so the, there was the first X-Men there. And so, uh, when you when you say to me first, uh, first class, that's, to me, that's what it is. It's Bobby G, you know, Cyclops and, and, and Hank and, and, and Warren. And if you follow my career then um, in the X books, I did just about every X book with, with Art, right? We did just about every book. And I don't know if you notice Art, but every time editorial switched team to another team, I asked to go to that book. And yeah. that's what we were doing. We were following the original class right, right. to their books. Yeah. So I, I just stayed with them. I mean, uh, Wolverine was coming up when I was doing that. That was, you know, when he was really blowing. I mean, he was really getting really huge. But I just was enamored with that first class. So you, the first time you worked on the X-Men, he wasn't even an X-Men at the time, but you inked uh, the long shot book with amazing, oh. amazing ink over art. Tell, tell him what you inked it with. <laughs> <laughs> in, in one of Wilson's first work before he was a uh, pencil is he was an inker for art. Uh, for Art, art Adams. Didn't you eat that with a rapidograph? <laughs> <laughs> well, well the, the, the real remarkable thing was that, um, you know, um, I say a lot of what we did back then, and, and, and it really is true to a lot of degree, we were young and dumb, you know. Um, I mean, seriously, right? I, I mean, when we got into the industry, um, it, it wasn't even considered a job. I mean, it was, I mean, you had to have read comics to go, to go hunting and say, hey, actually, can we actually do this? You know, and we didn't really get paid too much. Nobody was paying attention to us. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd bring my Spider-Man checks to the bank. You know, I was a young, you know, 20, 21 years old and bring it to the, you know, the pretty teller. And she'd just laugh at me, you know, how cute, you know? Um, now today, it, it's gotten so big that, you know, you bring your Spider-Man checks and, you know, the teller wants you to meet the manager now and they're, they're asking for San Diego tickets, you know? Um, but back then... Oh yeah, I, yeah, when you guys email your, your things in, you're, you're going directly. Yeah, we, we'll still get you all in to the San Diego Comic Con. No, but actually, but actually, seriously, I mean, um, a lot of the people now, there's a lot of people that have already shifted out of upstairs, quote unquote, in San Diego. Mm -hmm. But for a long time, they were all the old people from, from way back. I mean, we've been going, we've been going back more than 30 years in San Diego, right? Art? 35 for me. Yeah, yeah. See. I remember that that artist alley that one year. Oh, I remember Art got, almost got kicked out one year. Remember when we were at the Omni? No. Him and his buddies went to the roof. I, I guess you were drunk, huh? No. <laughs> we didn't do any he, of he went on the roof and he and and they took down all of the flags off of the roof and security got him. <laughs> we had Jim Lee there. Too. <laughs> I have photographic proof of this event. You stayed back, though. Oh, you I, and Scott stayed back. I, I was always proper. We. This is a little reveal. We used to uh, in Artist Alley. We would have glasses like this, and we would bring coolers, and we would just kind of be boozing it up right there in Artist Alley. And I'll tell you, we made a lot of friends that year. 
because we had like Kevin McGuire, like a bunch of people that were just kind of starting off, and we just like kind of slide the beer underneath the table, and we just kind of be dropping them back, and uh, yeah, by the end of the evening, we had quite a little entourage following us around. <laughs> yeah. Now the liquid in here is just water, so don't. <laughs> Except for this one, this is vodka. <laughs> So, uh, but, but, but to answer your question real quick, uh, uh, back in the day when I when I first got in, um, I did uh, I handed in the wrong portfolio. They said, you know, no pinups, no watercolors, no paintings. You know, just strict storytelling, storytelling stuff. Storytelling, yeah. I had no storytelling stuff. Mm -hmm. So Carl Potts was uh, the editor of uh, Punisher at the time, one of the senior editors. He was really good, and instead of just saying, "Hey, come back next year, kid," um, he not only gave me uh, the teaching tool at the time, the Five C's of Cinematography, this book about uh, film, filming, but it was a, 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 a good standard book for storytelling. He not only gave me that, but then he goes, hey, um, um, Ann Nuseni, the, the, the current um, X-Men editor, she's writing a book that art, this new guy, Art's gonna do, and hey, wanna earn some money by uh, at least inking. And so I inked that while I was studying the Five C's, and then after I, after I got that, then. And I, um, I passed the storytelling test and uh, got Punisher after that. Yeah. Yeah, Carl Potts was amazing. Yeah. It was the last. I still have Xeroxes of Carl Potts went over one of my first ink jobs at Marvel and he took a red marker and so I could get a better rate at Marvel. He went over the entire page and then had me redo the page and then I turned it back in and I got a higher page rate based on his notes and everything. Yeah, yeah, he was the last one that would actually do that. He I mean, he, he got you, he got me, he got Jim Lee. Yeah. I mean, he got just about all of the... Yeah, before Jim Lee was X-Men, Jim Lee was Punisher. Yeah, before yeah. that, he was Alpha Flight. Yeah. I, right? I, I inked that. Yeah, right. That, <laughs> that, I, was, I that was the, the flag yeah. San Diego year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, actually, that was the year that Marvel sent all of the editors to San Diego. Specifically looking for new talent. I think that was before San Diego was San Diego. Oh no, this was like at the Civic Center. Yeah, this was the <laughs> Civic Center. Yeah. So Steve, like, what, like, how did you get on board to start animating the X Men? Like, like, was there, was it a phone call? Or were you like campaigning for the gig? Or no. How did that uh, I, I've been in animation for years before that, uh, and a friend of mine became the producer. He was hired to be the producer. He wanted. He was looking for directors, and he hired me to be a director, and along with several other people. And uh, we were in development. And I just, as we were trying to develop it, we didn't hire a character designer, and I ended up just being the character designer because he liked what I was doing with it. So it kind of threw default. So going back to what you're saying, how you were a fan of the original, and you kind of stepped away. And then when you got this job, you came back. So what was it like to come back and maybe 100, 200 issues, not just the main title, but yeah. by that time there was X Factor, there was oh, the right. New Mutants, like how, like how was that for you as a fan to come back and there's, oh, there's so much reading? Oh uh, Yeah, I had to immerse myself pretty quickly. I didn't even know who Wolverine was. <coughs> so it was a lot of research and stuff. Yeah, I was just slightly familiar with the 90s cartoon, because mm -hmm. at one point they'd been talking to me about redesigning all those characters so it'd be easier to animate. <laughs> <coughs> but that the show got canceled before that happened. So, uh, so I was vaguely familiar with them a little bit. I knew that there was some girl who looked like Dolly Parton and uh, <laughs> talked like her, and I knew there was someone who I thought, well, maybe this is some new version of the Beast with claws or something. Yeah, I had no idea. So I had to quickly get deeply into it. I mean, we had a, some Bible written which is what they call the original premise in animation that kind of laid out a lot of the ideas and thoughts and characters they wanted to use and we kind of picked and chose from that but it, it was a lot of work. Thankfully we had a few months before we had to get too deep into it so I could kind of research it and stuff and the other people on the crew uh, were more immersed in it than I was so I was able to lean on them a lot more. Mark, what was your first uh, X-Men job? Oh my gosh. This is, I think I inked Terry Shoemaker on an annual or something. And then shortly after that, 
man, you talk about being thrown in the deep end. It's like Wills. I started eking Art Adams on the X-Men annual. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Historic. Yeah. And it was weird. It's like you were talking about how things kind of cross over. I was inking mm -hmm. Walter Simonson on Fantastic Four, and I was doing finishes on Dan Jurgens all the same mm -hmm. month. Yeah. Drastically. Drastic difference in styles <laughs> and just a lot of work. But I was like, you said, dumb and hungry, you know. So you don't know, you don't know any better, right? You just do it. Yeah. No, and, and, and it paid out. I mean, we, we took the ride and we left our still for some new one. And you also contributed to the Pantheon characters. Uh, like, uh, Will, can you talk about the creation of uh, Bishop and um, Fitzroy? I love uh, Trevor Fitzroy's character. Like, can you talk about just the creation of that and kind of, did you ask if you could create a new character? Did they come to you saying, hey, we need somebody, what, what do you got? Like, how did that come about? Well, one thing that everybody's got, got to, everybody's got to remember that comics, as, as much as you know, Art and I have had good times. Um, it's a four-week process. Now, that's not a lot of time. I mean, uh, and, and I'll I'll show you an example of you know being me being young and dumb and just you know jumping to to prove that you know I I, I could do it. Um, it was 281, it was the launch of the two new big books. We, we, we labeled, you know, we labeled the big, huge, new, bad world, so we needed two X-Men books the out there. The team and the gold team. Yeah, so my issue was Uncanny 281. And so I'm, I, I'm just beginning the, I think I was in week one or week two of it, and again, it's four weeks. Bob Harris calls up and he says, he's the editor, calls up from New York and he says, um, hey, uh, your team has most of the original people, but there's Wolverine and Storm on the other side, and so you're, you're, they, they think your, your team is underpowered, so uh, uh, can you create a new X-Men? And I go, uh, of course, right? Um, never did it before, but you know, of course. And he goes, uh, just make him cool. <laughs> and, and you got two weeks. Uh, no pressure. Yeah, two weeks while I'm doing this premiere no, new you know, first issue. And so uh, two weeks later, I, uh, I call up Bob and I make him the pitch. And he says, yeah, and the next issue I put him in there. That's it. I mean, because again, it's a four week process. I mean, you know about deadlines. I mean, it's, you don't have the luxury of going, mm, maybe, 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 no. You go, okay, what's the problem? Okay, we'll solve it this way, okay, let's go. You know, you just, you just go. You know, and again, we were young and dumb. And then you fix it next it. month. Any, any mistake <laughs> you make, you just fix it next month. That's what you sometimes see when characters first debut. Their costumes kind of change and evolve over time. So well, see, months. you know, that's one of that's interesting. That's one of the differences from now to back then. The big difference today is back then, um, nobody was really paying attention to us, except <laughs> you guys. Okay. Uh, well, I, what I mean, the comparative level to now today. You know, my grandma will bring up a comic book for me to sign for her friends, right? You know, but back then, grandma was going, is he still doing that silly ch childish stuff right there? You know, nobody was paying attention to us. So when the, nobody's paying attention to you, if you can do the work, they let you go. They let you do stuff, you know? They let you go with the flow. And we were, again, young and dumb, we were kids too, so we, we knew what you guys wanted because that's what we wanted, and they let us do that, so we did it. And then, and then we got there, and, and then the more that we they sh we showed that we could connect to you guys, the more they let us go. I was just gonna say that. I was like, the, yeah, the, the more popular it became, the more we got away with stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Art, like you created a slew of new characters with Fabian in the first Cable miniseries. Like, yeah. Uh, um, the Clan Chosen, which would continuity would be Cable's first team before X-Force or New Mutants even. So what was the... Like, did you have to ask permission or fill out for We We did have a little bit more lead time than I think you probably did, because you were, the, I, re, I remember you telling me this once, Wilson, you, you said, uh, on X-Men, you said, we inherited a bad schedule. And I never heard anybody talk like that before. I was like, yeah, we did. Because the book was already, it was already behind by the time we got on the book. So what that means is that, you know, you're kind of three months ahead of schedule. So let's just say the book was, instead of three months, which, which is the optimal, it was like a week and a half from shipping. So when Wilson and I took over the book, 
it never really got any better. I think it was always about a week and a half from shipping, which means just about the time you finish the last page, it goes to press. Like that, it was that crazy. So um, on cable, the 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 only backlash of that or the problem with that was it was a double sized issue. Mm -hmm. So it was it was more work than I had been used to doing um, because most of it was like 22 pages of of work. So this was paced out in a lot different manner than I was used to. And so then we did have a little bit more time to develop the worlds and to develop the characters. So um, that wasn't as under duress as like Wilson's Bishop, but um, Hazard and some of the characters that were in like X-Men 12 and 13, those were like, you know, gun to head, you know, doing it very quickly. Coming up with character designs, backstories, those type of things, yeah. Yeah, Art uh, brings up a question that I wanted to ask, like when, um, Jim and Will for leaving the forum. Um, um, on an image, um, uh, Marvel was looking for who to take up the book next, and uh, Art Art was chosen to follow Jim in that um, next issue. Which you were you are were friend, uh, friends with Jim, and you were in there doing the book, and you introduced new characters like um, like Hazard. So like I'm um, like, what's it like just in general, kind of taking the baton from the creators before you and basically being the next person to have the, the responsibility. Um, it, was, it was fairly nerve wracking, but Bob was just like, Bob Harris, the editor, he just said, carry on. So I was already doing that anyway. And a lot of the later issues that Wilson and I did and almost all the stuff I did on X-Men with Jim were finishes. Yeah. So I was already kind of finishing the book, so a lot of the style and the look was already, I was used to doing that anyway, so it was just, it was just actually kind of doing the breakdowns and then inking over that. Yeah, that's what, um, I'm like, finishes, it's when an artist does a looser pencil, and it's, uh, um, usually it's, they get someone that they can trust, so do, it's more than inking, they finish it, they tighten it up, and they kind of bring it into focus, and. Um, so it's rendering and black placements, mm -hmm. usually. Yeah, and a lot of that also comes from, and unfortunately, again, today, it doesn't happen as much. But back then, um, when you got on the book, you, you, until, until you totally screwed up, you could stay on the book as long as you wanted. <laughs> and then now they give you like three or four issues or something. But because we could stay on extended periods, like, like me and Art, we could get to know each other. So um, we could, you know, Art could say, oh, I, I love doing these, th this thing or I love doing that, like a building or buildings or something, or cars or stuff like that. So you can go a little loose on that, you know, or, you know, he'll, or he'll say, I, I have no idea how to do cars, so you gotta do those tighter and stuff. So we could develop a shorthand so and that I, where we don't have to both fully do the, you know, the work and we could, because again, it's just that deadline. That's all it is, it's just yeah. the deadline. Weren't uh, some of you at the time sharing the same studio place here in California? Like not necessarily a YouTuber, I believe, Jim, yeah, me, Jim, and Scott were in one yeah. studio, but Art were actually, you were one of the guys who started like a, 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 an ink cabal, right? You, you had assistance. Yeah, so in the early days, we, I had uh, Trevor Scott and mm -hmm. Danny Mickey working with me, and the neat thing about, I can't say enough, I've never said it, I've said it to Jim to his face, but I never said it to you to your face. Thank you so much, man. Will spent so much time with me um, inking and figuring out this technique because there was this whole up lighting like reflective light yeah. that became the style of the 90s and there was there was a certain like hatch patterns and way of lighting um, that had never really been done before and Wills was was doing this stuff and it was kind of evolving as we went along and I just remember you telling me like it's got to progress in a smooth manner and just giving me all kind of the ins and outs. And the, the neat thing is, I was in the South Bay in LA, the beach area, so you guys were San, San Diego, Diego, but somehow, because we were young and dumb, I would end up driving down to San Diego and hanging out with them. And you had a, <laughs> you had an apartment, right, that yeah. you guys were renting out. And so they had an apartment that they were working, so the living room, dining room area was all like a bullpen. Yeah. And so then I had my one room, you know, uh, how, like, apartment right on the beach 
and then I had a little, you were talking about it earlier, like little back room. Uh, it was a print shop, so I had the back room that I was renting out, so that's where, you know, Hack Shack Studios was. And so, Wills, I remember some nights you'd come down and we'd yeah, try to bang right, out yeah. pages, and then me going, you know, uh, south and doing the same, you know, with you guys. And, um, and God, I, mean, I learned this was so before much. Image. So, I mean, it was all yeah. set up already with the expo. Yeah, and, and just to back up, there was, when you started, when we started, there was no comic book artists on the West Coast. There was there was animators there were but there really were no comic book artists so everything was all New York based so just the fact that we found each other and every it became like a really tight knit community even like Rob Lightfield when I moved to Huntington Beach he lived like ten minutes twenty minutes from me so we would hang out at my apartment and draw comics as well so and then Sylvester Mark Sylvester was up the street when I lived in the South Bay in Malibu. And we used to hang out there as well. Which was so, really new, because back then, for pages, you wanted to live in New York because you couldn't email pages. Right. Right. Yeah. You yeah. Wanted, yeah. You, you, and sometimes you didn't even trust like FedEx to get those pages through there, because FedEx loses the pages. Do you predate FedEx? No, no, no. Oh, I no, do. But, but, see, <laughs> but see, I have fond memories of FedEx, because this is California, and we're young and dumb again, right? OK? And uh, I'm, I'm a boy racer. Uh, I, 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 I used to, uh, well, kid race at cars. But um, so five o'clock is the shut off for, 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 for FedEx, FedEx. But it's like, it's about 10, 15 miles from the studio. Um, and so we were young in them. So we would work until like 4.50 um, because the whole thing was, okay, so how fast can we, get over there or can we make the deadline we always made a deadline because the girls over there at FedEx they knew that every Friday every you know every well every few days we'd be over there so they'd be at the you know they'd be locking the door waiting for us to you know driving in the you know speed into the parking lot but um, it was a you know it was like this I mean I mean people don't understand working is I mean it's I mean especially on the animation side that I mean there's so much work compared to our stuff but both the same that there's so much work you're there's no time for relaxing or goofing off and stuff you're just working working and so that that 10 minutes from 4:50 to 5 o'clock that's like fun that's like you know because at the end of that and I gave it to the FedEx lady I got the night you know it, it, it you were off it's you know it's 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 it, you know no more work until the next morning and do you ever teach uh, what was it, TWA next, and then there was Delta Dash? Yeah. Because yeah. there were times when, yeah, okay. when Wills would yeah. go, here's the last page, and then you would ink it up, and you'd do like the same, like four to six o'clock in the morning, but FedEx didn't deliver, you know, for us, they, they had a cutoff time, and so I lived close to LAX, so we would drive, once again, like crazy maniacs to the airport, and we would personally hand them the page, they'd pack it up, and then Marvel, in New York City, would get it the next day, yeah, and the then they would make, they they would make shipping. Service. Yeah, and, and yeah. I remember there was that one period where we found couriers. Oh. <laughs> they would drive to our house, we could give them pages, and boom, they're off, and then two hours there. Oh, did you get it, did you get it? <laughs> those, those books were down to the wire. I mean, when you were saying five, 10 minutes, Five, ten minutes could seem like two, three hours, you know, because the amount of work and the amount of things that you could get done in that short period of time was astronomical. Things, pages that would come together last minute would just boggle your mind, some of the stuff that we were pulling off. Steve, can you talk about how, like, you coming into it, you have an appreciation for the comic stories and the comic art, and you as a character designer are trying to adapt these so they can be animated. Um, that must be pretty difficult. I know you respect art and like an artist, so. You're talking to me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, the main idea is that, you know, we were all familiar on, on our show with the 90s show, and we weren't very uh, thrilled with repeating that look. <laughs> we, we thought it was really ugly and didn't animate well. Um, it was just visual noise. and didn't allow the animators overseas, which is usually where the stuff gets animated. It, you, know, you do all the 
pre-production, the storyboards, the designs and stuff here, and then you ship it overseas to animate. And they're getting paid by the scene, and they don't get paid until they finish a scene. It doesn't matter if the scene's got 100 characters and you know goes on for five minutes. They won't, will not get paid until that scene is finished. So they're rushing as hard as they can to get it done. So what you want to do is create drawings the character designs that they can do easily. Yeah. And being an, I've been an animator already probably at that point for 20 years myself, you know, doing the actual animation. So I knew what I felt comfortable animating. So that was the first goal was to make sure that the designs were animatable, unlike the 90s show, which <laughs> were just basically lifts from the comics. Yeah. And then the, the other big thing we wanted to do was to not follow the same characters. Uh, you know, reinvent the characters, like for instance, the biggest one at, in the beginning was Rogue. We didn't want to go through the, uh, do the Dolly Parton version of Rogue. The big hair and the big Southern Belle accent and whatnot. We just, we thought that was silly and didn't fit at all in the type of fit show we wanted to do. So we, so we wanted to aim for more of a uh, realistic slant on it, especially since- Dolly Parton is a real person though. Yeah, she's a real person, but she's a silly person. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She's half fake. She admits she's a cartoon character. I'm just giving you a hard yeah. time. So, but we wanted to make it so that it was much more believable. So we decided to, in her case, make her goth, which was a, a very serious. So you look. worked on both shows. Mm -hmm. So you worked on X Men Evolution and the original. No, 90s. I, I didn't work on the 90s. I worked on X Men Evolution okay. and Wolverine and the X Men. Okay. Which is the show that came after X Evolution. Okay. Um, so, you know, obviously in, for Rogue, we went golf, which was a, a look at that time, a, a high school look. And we also decided to go for trailer trash because we wanted to make her, it fit the type of uh, power she was going to have and the type of crisis she was going to have in her character and stuff. So we did a lot of that. And we went back to the original slant on some of the characters, like Scott, we made tall and thin, and instead of this humongous weightlifter that he became. Slim. Yeah. I mean, you know, his nickname in the original comics was Slim. And I, I thought the redesign on that, that Wolverine re redesign, was really amazing. And also, it made for great toys. Yeah. I thought the toys, they, they really translated well into the Thank toys. Yeah. Yeah. No, I wanted to ask about X-23, his debut in yeah. X-Men Evolution. Yeah. Were you involved with that? Yeah, I was the original designer. Yeah. I, I designed her originally. Um, Craig Kyle was the creator of mm -hmm. her. He was the producer at the time. Um, and it, she was based on his uh, fiance's niece. Mm -hmm. It was the original character. So, you know, I kept getting these photographs of his niece dressed up with yeah, her. So she was an original character, not from comics, created in the cartoon that went on to come to comics yeah. and become really popular. And for a time when Spoilers, uh, Wol uh, Wolverine died, she became Wolverine for seven years. A great book for her. Um, so what do you think about creating something, like designing her in, in cartoons and seeing her have this long life outside? That's pretty rare, it's like her and Harley. Yes, yeah, those are pretty much the only two that I can think of offhand. Um, it, I mean, it was not something we expected at all. We had no clue that she was gonna become popular. In fact, we weren't even sure it was a good idea. Yeah, like, like how surprised that Marvel or whoever would allow new characters to be made and not just made? Yeah, you know, I, I'm not real clear as to why uh, they went ahead with her. I think they, it was a mandate that they put her into the comics, and I don't think the uh, Quesada and some of those were happy with her. I think that might explain some of her origin in the mm -hmm. comics. Mm -hmm. they, they came around. Yeah. Oh, they did, yes. I, I don't think they, they were looking towards her being a hit, though. I think they were just saying, fine, we'll, we'll go ahead, but you know, she's going to be a prostitute instead. Yeah. That, that wasn't originally part of the... Uh, I, I'm remembering the, if, if you don't mind, I, I was remembering uh, one of the episodes, and I'd never seen this before, and I don't know if you called her Kitty Fried or if you call her Shadow Cat or whatever. In the, in the, she was both, yeah. Yeah, and there was this car coming in, and then she just fades, and then she just fades right into the seat of mm -hmm. the car, and I had never 
ever seen anything like that. And then later in the Matrix 2 or whatever, they did you know that character, yeah. that face. But I, I'd never seen anything like that before. So that, that show was really, yeah, we, it we, was we, really good. We did some innovative things that, yeah. we, that are now part of canon. I mean, we were the ones who connected the dots between the Weapon X program and the Super Soldier program. Um, you know, things like that we, we kind of manipulated because mainly we didn't really know yeah. and we were just kind of shooting it and putting it together. What about the Wilson? Uh, Wilson, did you know any better? You're young, you just did it because you yeah. weren't asking permission. Well, we weren't young, but <laughs> we, were, we just didn't, we were young as far as the comics went and we just, and they weren't keeping that close an eye on us. In fact, mm -hmm. the, the only thing that Avi, who was in charge of Marvel at the yeah. time, was concerned about were the colors, that they each had their main <laughs> colors on their characters, you know, like uh, Shadowcat had to have some sort of powdered blue, and Jean had to have some sort of green, and, you know, that type of thing. And Wolverine's hair. You know, he, he wanted to make sure that we had some sort of weird flip-up going on with his hair. In fact, that's, if you look at the movie, that's what he had going on in the first X-Men movies. That, that's the only thing they would allow him to be involved in, was making sure Wolverine's hair was right. Perfectly done. Yeah. Perfectly yeah. But, but I did get rid of the mutton chops. <laughs> yeah, we thought those were silly looking, so we got rid of the mutton chops. So, yeah. I have a few more questions, but I don't want to hog all, hog all the time. Does anybody have any questions? Right there, sir. Any part of what I know about the X Men is that people probably might think it's about how convoluted it is. And it seems like when the staff changes, they got all the information passed over to do a little research. But it's kind of fun looking back and trying to draw the line and figure it all out. I was wondering what do you consider to be the point of view of the most convoluted or confusing aspect of the X Men? For, for those that are here, he's kind of asking what. Do they consider the most uh, convoluted or complicated aspect of the X-Men? Like maybe there's something that you, I don't know, there's something you enjoy that he's like, even though it's like com uh, convoluted or? Well, I, I, for me it's just, it goes down to the basic structure of, of comics. And one of those basic tenements, one of those basic laws is they really can't die, you know? So it's hard to, well, let me put it this way. Superman is a hard character to write or draw because he's perfect. So you can't put him in, it's hard to put him in the dilemma because everybody will go, yeah, right. You know, he's, he's just perfect and super powerful. So you have to play around with that. But then, again, at the bottom line, you, you can't really, you can't really do that. So our stories just keep going. That's the only thing that I, you know, I, I come from a science fiction, well, when I, I don't come from, I, I, don't, I, I, have, I don't mean I write science fiction, but I got into all this, this creative fantasy stuff through reading science fiction novels back then. And, and those are about building a world, and then, okay, here are the rules of the world, okay, now drop a story into that, and now pay attention to making sure you follow all the rules. Um, when I got into comics, I didn't know some of the basic tenements and stuff, so I just transposed some of that, that stuff in, which is why we got all the cyberpunk stuff, we got all the science stuff, we got all the time travel and stuff like that. It's just us playing around with that stuff. Um, but then after a while, I started noticing that we really couldn't go anywhere personally with the characters and stuff. And that's the only thing that, that, that I had some um, problems with later on with, with the genre itself. So you kind of connected, I believe it was revealed that the baby that uh, Cyclops had with a Madeline turned out like Cable had been introduced separately and you helped, you, know, you were there when they put that together and revealed that Cable was the baby. I, I have to say that was wrong. Marie Callender, San Diego, X-Men, then uh, Lunch with Bob, and Rob being Rob, you got to remember, Rob was Rob was the kid. Rob was the youngest of us all. Yeah, and then and 18, 19, maybe? Yeah, yeah, I was like 20, 21, 22. And then just in the middle of lunch, Rob blurts out, you know, Nathan is Cable. And it, there was a big long pause and everybody goes, okay, then Bob starts assigning, okay? Will's do the kidnapping, blah, 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 and, and you know, and then we start doing that stuff. But then, oh, th actually, that, that, that goes into my point. Um, so then we were assigned all these different things to do in our separate books to set up this whole thing of uh, the baby going in, cable in the future and stuff like that. 
And then after we actually, I don't remember, after we did all that and it published, then Marvel said, don't tell anybody that Nathan is. Yeah, they kind of downplayed you it. You know, yeah, they, they never confirmed it for like years. Yeah, we all knew, but no one yeah. else did. But, but there was a lot of that. We would, we would set something up or we would get something approved to do and then we'd do it and then, uh, I don't know if they were like gauging audience yeah, there's the story of uh, the 12, too, mm -hmm. like the, the legend thing. But then that comes full circle with you now working with Rob on Major X. And I don't want to spoil it. Major X and how like you, you coming back to the X-Men and choosing to do this with Rob. Like, like, I, like I know you have a lot of choices of what you can do in comics. Like what made this something you wanted to do? Um, actually, that's a good example of just about almost everything I've talked about. Um, I mean, there was a, there, there's always been a lot of serious talk um, uh, within the time constraints, um, but because of that serious crunch, we always, as Art knows, try, try to uh, make everything light and stuff. But um, everything really is just on a personal level. You get into the industry, and if you could, if you could do the work, if you could, if you could brave those deadlines, if you could step up when, when needed, um, then that was, that was just the skill set. So everything after that, because that's just hard work, where you don't have no, no time to think, the rest of it is just personal. So what really happened with, with Major X for me was that last November, I, mean, I, I don't know if you guys know, but in the year 2000, I went into a diabetic, diabetic coma for a week. Um, I, uh, I went through four bouts of dialysis, I flatlined once, I lost about 40 pounds in that week. When I came out, I couldn't draw. I couldn't draw for 10 years. That, that, it, that's why you guys didn't see me for a while there. Um, so progress, 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 you know, push, 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 relearn, relearn. And now I'm at the point where, um, in my own opinion, um, uh, uh, I, I'm, better, I'm better skilled than I used to be you know, uh, before I went into the coma. And so last November, I go, okay, well, Okay, I've been doing covers for two years now, getting back, slowly getting back into the industry. Can I do that monthly grind again? And I swear, that, that second, literally, Rob called up and said, hey, we got this major Lex thing, and you, you, you want to do this? It's going to be like the old days, and I'm going to write it. And I go, perfect, because as an as a artist, especially the kind of artist that, um, that the X-Men required at the time, and, and, and I am, um, I'm a detail guy, and I, and, I, and I like playing with the visual tools, so I like big, I, I, I like energy and action. A lot of times through my career, my 30 years, you get some really good writers who are really skilled, but they're not very visual, so they'll box you in sometimes. Sometimes there's going to be this really great explanation point of a scene, and the way he's cut it, you have two small panels at the last quarter of the last page. And um, I could do that, it will read, but it will, in my mind, as my artist mind, it won't have that impact, yeah. you know? So Rob understands that language because he plays with the same skills, that, the tools that I do. And, and so he Rob, can, huh? Rob would know to write your strength. Exactly. And give you those. Right, so when, when he calls and he says, oh, I've got this thing to do, can you do it? You know, can you do one issue at least? I go, okay, I'm just trying to test my out. And again, like every, almost everything else, I just, I never really thought about it. I go, okay, yeah, do it, do it. And it was the right, it was the right choice because I did have a great time again. And part of that was that Rob knew how to write for me. So that if, I mean, you read, I mean, it's just words, the plot. And then you try to visualize it. And you're trying to, vision, as a professional comic book guy, you're trying to not only visualize it, but say, okay, within the 20 pages, which is basically around four scenes, can you fit it in there? And uh, most of the time, the really hard work is trying to make sh everything fit the way you want it to it's fit with what the writer wants you to do. The times that you have fun is when you say, okay, I need four panels, and you read, and you read it, okay, uh, there's four panels. I need four pounds for this, I need five panels for that, I need two for this, and then, oh look, page 20, we're done. I don't have to do any shifting around. I don't have to do any editing. I don't have to do any second thinking. You know, Those are the fun times, because I can just go and go and go. The slow times are 
okay, I could do this, and then, oh, I need two more pages. But in comics, that means a whole slab that then has to be folded up four times, to, yeah. and that gets into, I think, with like eight pages of things. So I need two more, can't have that. You gotta have eight pages, yeah. and that's too much money, so I've gotta squeeze. Mm -hmm. Most of comics is squeezing. Most of comics is editing. Control We're film. doing Condense. brief moments, yeah. which is why we love watching animation and the movies, because you guys get beats. You guys get moments. You guys can do the follow through. You can do the sequence. We, every now and then we'll do sequence shots and stuff, but that just eats up time because each sequence, no matter how great, is like maybe one or two seconds. You know, I've we, got we to handle to do the whole moments. scene. We have yeah. to do moments within a scene versus a continual scene. Yeah. Which is why then I really got into like detail because I love putting in Easter eggs and stuff. I love, because you really got to be able to read my scene and then go back and look at it and go, oh, Oh, look, uh, Rogue is pissed off. Uh, why is she pissed off? She didn't say, oh, she must be, uh, uh, something must have, oh. You know, I, I try to put a lot of stuff in there so that it just doesn't serve the plot of, the plot is just action. He picks, he pulls the gun out of his pocket, um, somebody sees him, blocks it, and he picks up another gun. I try to put in, a, a really good artist will be able to put in a little emotion in between all that, how they're reacting to each other. Kind of like That's not a, in the plot. So it's kind of like a music where you have like the bass line, then you have the, um, the guitar that's doing something different. You kind of have this is what you're focusing on, but there's still something going on like, like over here. Yeah, like the lead, lead, lead guy. I mean, yeah, like he, he will run on the melody, melody, but yeah. he'll add so much a, a, to it. We have time for one last question before we have to wrap up. If you could raise your hand, like any last question that anybody has. You got one pent up right here? What is the best looking Psycho design? One from the X Men Evolution and the anime series. I said one of them is the is teenager and another one is an adult. Um, and one of them has an ex walkie talkie <laughs> or ex communicator. That's what they communicate with Storm. And, mm -hmm. and, and um, Cyclops um, has is that got red from the PA. on that. What his question, what his, his original question was, is which, which is their favorite Cyclops design from X-Men Evolution and Wolverine X-Men? But I'm going to expand it. Like, is, uh, like you're both, like you're all fans of like the first class era. Like, what is your favorite Cyclops like design ever? Movies, TV, animation, comics? Uh, me? Yeah. Uh, Go first. Well, the one I did, I guess, was the evolution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, there you go. That's cool. yeah, that, yeah, I'll be honest. Yeah, I, but, you know, I'm sure that, yeah, I have heard from a lot of fans that they liked Cyclops better in evolution than they did most of the time because he didn't quite have the stick up his ass yeah. that he has in most of the comics and most of the movies and stuff, so. Like, uh, like visually, your Cyclops design there reminded me of my favorite comic form, which is the Wall of Simon from the X Factor. Like a very clean, like big X. Yeah. Like that's the. Yeah. So art, like, do you have a favorite, like, Cyclops design? Not necessarily to draw, but it's something to be a pain, like the. I, the I like I like the original Kirby. Of oh, the uniform. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like that Cyclops. I liked him better when he didn't have the hair exposed, where he had the full cowl and everything. I thought that was pretty cool. We would. Have, we, that was our first goal was to use those uniforms. We got kicked down by Mark on I said, don't do that. Come up with unique uniforms for each of them. So, you know, well, you've like, drawn several of them. Like, what's your favorite one? The, the one, the one you should pick. Yeah, the Walt uh, Simonson. Like, like, everyone should go back and look at those. Okay, that's all the time we have. Thank you, everybody. Like, uh, thank you all for coming. Like, last, like, um, like if you could, uh, like, if you have more questions, you can come back to the floor and visit them at their booth. They will be here a couple more hours a day. Thank you very much, everybody. And I'd like to add, if anybody yeah. wants a black and white poster, come by the booth or the table and say, from the ashes, and you will get a free poster. Yeah. It's very uh, limited, so I go there now, right after the panel. Yeah, I mean, there's like 10 left. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you, guys.